So, gore.ph6. Close your eyes. So, what? Let's start fresh. Let's start, start fresh. fresh. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're ready. Good? Yeah. Okay, so this is 4.ph6. Um, after doing our poll, he realized that we're all still a little bit confused about what exactly is going on and how to navigate these. So hopefully this will help you a little bit to clarify some questions that you might have. So the question is design a process to produce air at one atmosphere, 18 degrees C, with 10% humidity from... Um, air at one atmosphere is 29 degrees C and 75 percent humidity. So I'm from Houston, so I'm very familiar with humidity. So today, <laughs> three sections. Is everyone good with that? This is vapor, liquid, and solid. Yeah, that we understand. That's what we're good with. Okay. So then from that, what's this line here? Liquid vapor. So your two phase liquid vapor, and then what's here? Liquid solid, and then here? Solid vapor, okay. And remember that your solid vapor line and your liquid vapor line are at 100% humidity. Okay, so that's an easy place to navigate, especially when you're working with problems with humidity. Um, does everyone know the formula for humidity about how you go from like 100% like partial pressure at 100% humidity to what your partial pressure would be at 75% humidity. You guys learn this in class? No? Yes? Joel says yes. Who, who doesn't know how to calculate it from? Okay, so Brennan and Shane and Robbins. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll get into that in just one second. Um, so first let's find our point on the graph. Um, so we're 29 degrees C, 100% humidity, uh, because we don't know what 75% humidity is, right? But we do know what 100% humidity is because we have this line. So because we know what 100% humidity is, we can draw a line over and say that is at 0.4 atmospheres, okay? So we know what our partial pressure is at 100%. And so then if it's 75%, it's just 75% of this partial pressure. So what you're gonna do, is you're going okay, sorry. So you go down and your partial pressure now is going to be at 0.3 instead of 0.4. So 0.4 is 100% and then 0.3 is 75%. So 0.4 times 0.75 is 0.3. Okay, so if it was 0.5, what would it be? If it was 50% humidity. Point two. Okay. So um, this is where we want to go, right? Down here at our um, point oh oh two, and we're currently here, right? Did everyone get these two points? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know our we're at one atmosphere, right? And we know that it is partial pressure of point oh oh two. So what's our mole fraction here? 0.2%, 0.002. Okay, so navigating this graph, where should I go? I'm here right now, and I want to get down here. Decrease the temperature. Decrease the temperature. Then slide along the line. Slide along the line. Then what? Then increase the temperature. Increase the temperature. Well, after you separate it. After you separate it. So why do I have to separate it before our I can? Otherwise, you'll just go straight up, back up the line. Otherwise, I'll just go back up here. Yeah. Okay. So is everyone good with that? If you want to get off your line, you have to separate it so that you go only into vapor land or only into solid land. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, unless, think about, okay, so if this was pure water, if this was pure water and I was here, would I be able to go like across here and then down? Can I cross lines like that if it's pure? Or is it the same same thing? I have to follow the line. You can cross. Who thinks I can cross? Raise your hand. Who thinks I can't cross? Raise your hand. Cross the line. If you're a pure substance, 
can you go across this line? Or do you have to follow it down? If you don't think I can cross the line, raise your hand. If you do think I can cross the line, raise your hand. Okay, so you can cross the line if you are a pure substance. If you're not a pure substance, you have to follow the line. So that's just sort of a sanity check. Make sure when you're working with the problem, you know whether or not you're allowed to cross that line. Okay, so we've gone over here. So we have a cooler to negative 12.5 right down here. And then we separate it. So there's our cooler. And then we separate it right here. You gotta have your separator so you can get off the line. And then you're going to heat it back up. All right, so that's part A. Everyone good with that? Do we feel a little bit better about these graphs? All right, so let's head on to the next part. So we have our same two points, but this time we're not allowed to use this separator down here because we've been told we're not allowed to use a solid vapor separator. Okay, so where, so my thought is let's go here, right? We're gonna cool it again. Let's cool it down to right here right? And then we're going to uh, separate it like we did before, and then I'm going to expand it down here. Can I do that good with everyone? No. No. Why is that not good? Joel gave a good explanation earlier. You have a limit of five atmospheres of total pressure on the system, so if you expand it at that point, your pressure would be ten. Ten atmospheres. Okay, so why would it be ten atmospheres? Because your partial pressure Partial pressure at that point is 0.02. Okay, so our partial pressure is 0.02. And that would be at one atmosphere. And so if you're decreasing, if you have to expand it all the way down to the point at the bottom, which is 0.02, you would have to expand it 10 times. Okay, so that would be 10 times more pressure. Okay, so the pressure would be 10 times more pressure. Okay, so it's And 10 times one atmosphere is 10 atmospheres. I, I think so. You think so? I, I, Okay, we're going to go with an assumption there and say that's right. <laughs> um, so this point here would be at 10 atmospheres, and we've been specified in our problem that we're only go allowed to go to 5 atmospheres. So one way to, what's that? When you expand something, why does the pressure go up? Isn't the pressure going to go down if you expand it? I, like, I'm, no, why does, I'm just wondering why does the pressure go up? So we got point 0.1 atm for that. You have point 0.1 atm here? No, so they're, they're saying if they stayed at one atmosphere and then they went down, so they expanded it to 0.1 atmospheres. Because oh. they're decreasing the pressure by a factor of 10. So they never, they never pressurized it first. Oh, but you know that this point here is at one atmosphere. So it's still, it's not like, yeah, we, oh, we just okay. expanded a different problem. Right, you went, you, 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 yeah. So if you were to scale everything in your process by 10, then this would be at one, yeah. right? And this would be at 10. Okay. It's the same thing, you guys have the same thing. Yeah, how do up. you solve that, like for the total pressure of the system? Like okay. if you don't have like moles. Yeah, yeah, okay. So earlier we found that our mole fraction here, after we separate, right, is 0 0.002, 0 0.002, right? Because we're at one atmosphere and 0 0.002 partial pressure which means that our mole fraction is 0.002. Oh. So if we're to have, we know it's 0.002, and we know that our partial pressure is 0.02 at this point. So then if we were to say 0.02 divided by 0.002, right, partial pressure divided by your mole fraction would give you your total pressure, which would be 10. Okay. And so we know that we can't do that, so we know that we have to go further along this line so we can have a lower partial pressure when we do finally separate it. Um, so what I recommend is going to 0.01 because at 0.01, if you divide that by um, your 0.02, then you're going to get five atmospheres. And at five atmospheres, you're right in the range you need to be in. Um, so then you can come, so what I recommend is going so you know you can't use these two lines. We've been told that. So um, you're going to compress it. And then you're going to, I mean, we went a little further back past it. You can really be anywhere in this range so long as you're not pressing into your solid gas, right? So anywhere in here, you'll be under five atmospheres. 
Um, and then, what do I have to do here? Compress it. Compress it? Separate it. Separate it. Okay, so I separate it. And then, where am I going to go? I'm going to go down. How do I go down? Expand it. Expand it? Okay, so expand is down and compress is up, right? Okay, so increase temperature, decrease temperature, increase pressure, decrease pressure. It's the same you would read like any other diagram. Um, and then I go this way. So what am I doing? Heating. So, yes. So like, mm -hmm. why can't you just cool it and compress it again? Like, if you compress it, it's not going to go up the line because it's not changing temperature, right? Could you compress it? Yeah. Change your order. Cool first, then compress. Could you do that? Cool first. Yeah. Down, yeah, so if we pull yeah, it over down, down to so 70 degrees. After, after you separate. And then and compress, compress it. it. And then compress it? Yeah. Then compress separate, it. then expand. Okay, yeah. Okay. Same thing. But what happens is the state function doesn't depend on what path. Yeah. That sounds like a math one I need too. Yes. We don't speak of that right now. <laughs> um, okay, so what does this look like in process form, right? So we said I. Compress, cool, separate, expand, heat. Yes? I just clearly get why if you compress it, then some water will condense, right? So the pressure, will the pressure pressure decrease or decrease? If you compress it? Yeah. Okay, so what you're, I'm sorry, I'm confused. So like if you have a mixture of water vapor and air and uh -huh. you compress it, then would it would some of the water vapor condense yes. to liquid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would the partial pressure of water vapor in the air would it increase? I mean decrease instead of increase because you have some in the liquid. Well what would happen is the partial pressure will stay the same but the total pressure would increase and then because some of the water is in the system and then you bring the liquid water out and then when you decompress it you have like less moles of water in the system so the partial pressure will be well, no, partial pressure would still increase to like 100% humidity, wouldn't it? It's already, that's, that's it's already at 100 She's already at 100 She has oh, already condensed some liquid, then increased the pressure. The partial pressure increase from the compression is equal and opposite to the partial pressure decrease you get from the condensation of the liquid. They balance out so that you stay at the same point on the graph. It's forced to stay on the, on the line, so that's why it happens. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. If you want, we can talk about it later if you're still a little bit confused. Okay. So, in process form, we compress, right? So, this was a compressor. Everyone's familiar with compressor? So, compressor, you're smaller. Makes sense. And then cooler, separator, expander, which is the opposite of a compressor, and then heater. Okay. So, does anyone have any leftover questions? Yes. Oh. Oh, sorry. You're supposed to catch that, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> okay.